say something stupid, well, no. If I say something wrong, please let me know. You've got to um, quit saying that because they're going. Because they're going to do yeah, it. I mean, well, see, but I want the interaction because we're not live. But look, we're looking at all these cameras on the table. Let's let's take a little tour. So this is the one of the early Leicas, uh, and we're going to. There's no commercials. So. There's no commercials. So. You just keep going. We just keep going. Like the Energizer Bunny. So we're going to do close-ups too. So I'm just going to hold them up right now to show you what's here in front of me. And then, and, and Joe and Johan are going to come in and do some close-ups so you guys can get a real, guys and gals can get a real good uh, idea what these things are. 1930 or so. Um, this then eventually like could put a rangefinder on top of the camera rather than just a viewfinder. And um, it also has an interchangeable lens. And so the lens is threaded on and off. This camera is in gray enamel which was during the Second World War, all of the Leicas that were made at the end of the Second World War were finished in gray lacquer or gray paint because they didn't have enough money or enough resources for chrome. And you might say, well, Dan, what about all the chrome that's on that camera? Well, the parts were already made, but they couldn't chrome the top and the bottom plates. So there you have a wartime um, Leica 3C K camera. And then eventually in 1954, Leica created the M3, which has a bayonet style mount, which means you can just, you know, to Keith's point about everything becoming faster, um, now you can zip lenses on and off. And even lenses from 1954 will work on the very latest digital camera because the mount is the same. But let me not confuse all the stuff that we have in front of us because I want to take you on a little tour of this gear. So this is the Leica M3. M for Messe Suture, which is the German word Ma. for Messe Suture. Ma. <coughs> Ma. Am I pronouncing it no, wrong? No, I'm just, I didn't hear. I, oh. Meh. Uh huh. Meh. I pronounce Meh? stuff wrong. <laughs> it's the Messe Suture. It's actually not so Meh. It's awesome. It's fantastic. The range front Messe Suture, right? Am I, I saying that right? I don't know. I mispronounce things all the time. Suture. We'll say it again, Ern? Messe Suture. There you Perfect. go, Ernie. <laughs> Ernie knows. He speaks more German than I do. So in 1954, Leica introduced the M3. M uh, uh, for rangefinder. And then three, <laughs> and then three was for 50, 90, 135, which are the little frame lines that are in halt, that are inside the the rangefinder. And so that's 1954. That's what the three stood for? Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, that. 50, 90, 135. And then if you wanted to use 35, they had a whole other contraption that changed the angle of view. So that's why the 35 has like the bug eyes things yeah. that they call the R, the rangefinder attachment, because um, it adapted the 50 millimeter uh, point of view. And then eventually in the 1980s, Leica incorporated a meter into the camera and introduced the Leica M6. And this is, uh, I think these are all 50 millimeter lenses that we're looking at, except for these two. So this is a Leica M6, and Leica made cameras in silver chrome, and they made cameras in black chrome, and they made cameras in black paint as well. But you'll have to watch a different video to learn about that. So all these lenses are interchangeable. Let's see, what's next? This one, this is super cool. This is one of my favorite cameras. I got to do a plug for red dot, blue dot. So uh, Keith, uh, and his wife, Amy, also have a, a photographic and travel blog called red.bluedot.com. And one That's of the- That's a lot of dots. It's a lot of dots, but it's easy to remember. Uh, we sell these little softies here in the store um, and they fit perfectly. And they stay on. And they stay on. They stay on, they feel great. So pick one up if you like them. Anyway, so this is Keith's. You may have noticed one on his uh, plowable camera as well. So this is the Leica M monochrome. Um, it's, a, it's a digital camera, um, and as you can see, it's almost identical in size to the M3. A lot of things haven't changed, but it's digital. And on it is the new 50 millimeter F1.2 reissue Noctilux lens, which I'm pretty wild about. Um, this is the first one that's come into the Midwestern United States, and we have it here in the uh, Tamarkin Camera Showroom so that uh, I can play around with it no, so that you can play around with it when you come to visit. It's really beautiful. Uh, isn't it? It's a nice lens. They really did a great job with it. Yeah. And I'm a 50 nut. I mean, I'm crazy about 50s. So let's see, what else is on the table here? And the other two things I pushed aside earlier are these are more recently manufactured cameras and lenses. This is um, the Leica M Reporter, and it's a special edition with a Kevlar covering and a kind of minty, olivey, drabby green, um, khaki green, I guess they want me to call it, uh, 
that is kind of impervious to scratches. I just took it out of the box today. I'm gonna to beat the snot out of this camera for the next few years. I'll report back. On the camera is the new 35 uh, apochromatic um, Sumacron lens that's close focus. It's a focus. great name for a company. It's like what? Nothing. It's a great, isn't it? It's a great name for a company, apochromatic. So lenses that are apochromatically corrected are lenses that have been designed in such a way that e e the red, the green, and the blue all meet at the identical point on the film plane so that, and this goes back to the days of color film photography, so that your colors really pop. Um, it does have a use in black and white and in digital photography and apochromatically corrected lenses are indeed desirable, although certain photographers may tell you otherwise. Every photographer has their own reason and what's right for us might not be right for you. And so you might say, Leica, overpriced POS. Well, I hear that. I'll take pictures with a hot pink Hello Kitty Holga. I don't care. I happen to be lucky enough to be in, within the brand of Leica. And so I'm going to enjoy this. A hot pink Hello, yeah. Okay. Hot pink Hello Kitty I, Holga. That really, that really blew me for a Yeah, um, you can hand you I can was going to ask anything. you a serious gear question. Though. Yeah, yeah, do it. So when the, you know, we had the 50 Sumicron and we had the 50 Sumilux and then they came yeah. out with the 50 Apo Sumicron. Yeah that blew the pants off everybody. And they it's said, an amazing one. Literally the entire Leica community was pantsless for like two years. And, <laughs> That's and Everybody once, needed to just take a cold shower. Yeah, and once, that, you know, once everyone got their hands on them and everybody, yeah. then everybody calmed down, put their pants back on. Right. This Apo 35, that just came out, right? Yeah, it's brand new. So there, is, it, is it pants blowing as well or is it no pants? <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Is it? It's amazeballs. It's every bit as good as the 50 millimeter Apo. So there's, Two different types of corrections for I know I'm telling you this like you don't know it. I don't. There's two even different have an types. Idea what you're really? Say. There's two different types of corrections that optical lenses need, and this is true for video. large and small. Large and larger. Okay. Uh, there's apochromatic correction, which is chromatic corrections for color, and the other is for spherical apparition. And because lenses are circular, they produce spheres of mal-focused light, um, not this is, defocused. This is the portion of the video where like your eyes get really heavy and you start right. to think, this is, and people, what the f is he talking, why? So if you want, we'll, we'll let you know when the uh, aspherical portion is over. To tune back in, right. <laughs> so we now return to our aspherical programming. Right, this is, this is where you get up and go, and, and go grab another beer from the fridge. We have a question. A question from the audience. Oh, no. Is this you holding for noise? Yes. Okay. No. no. It's not. No free shipping. No warranty. Free. These are things you never hear at Tamark and Camera. Where am I? Right, where Why am I? Why am I here? No warranty. The new reporter camera, it's a digital camera. <laughs> Honestly, if there's, a, oh, then, if there's like a award show for this type of whatever this is, performance, yeah. Barnack Hour. Yeah, do I uh, win? The spherical, aspherical section is probably going to be nominated for several different categories. It better be. If I don't get nominated for something, I'm going to start flipping tables, I'll tell you that. So, 75 Noctilux is the other piece of gear that we have on the table. And the guys are going to get close-ups to all this. You all will get a better idea of what, what they look like close-up in the video. Um, and also, you know, you can reach out to us at um, uh, tamarkin.com and ask about any of this stuff, and we're, we're always happy to help. Also, while, while we talk about reaching out, I can't believe I used that expression. Call us, email us, or reach out, whatever you want to do. Uh, we're gonna, in the bottom of the video down below in the comments and whatnot, in the bottom, there's links to Keith's website, Websites? Am I? Are you farting? No. Okay. <laughs> that, that caught uh, me off guard. That was funny. <laughs> but no, I was looking for the links down below. Oh yeah. The, oh. That was funny. Yeah. I, I wondered below. if I wondered if farting would come up. It did. These microphones are probably pretty good. So uh, how far into the Barnack hour are we? The, it, I don't know. We're it took a while. Gonna, I mean, honestly, find you out. can't ever talk about that before. We're gonna find out. Well, a lot like of this is gonna have to spherical just get and caught. aspherical section of the. We can't <laughs> keep. Three, three, Oh God, we can't keep all this in, can we? He's shrugging. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. It's like, yes, we're filming. Your show's a ball of shit, but lens. we're rolling. That lens has a hole on the bottom. Should we just start over? Oh, the lens. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, the lens has a hole in the bottom. Um, that's because it weighs a ton. No, because it's really heavy. And it, there's a tripod cleat that comes with this lens. Um, and so when it's on a camera, you have, um, there are also tripod um, sockets for, for the tripod cleats on the cameras themselves. But as you can imagine, um, having such a heavy lens on one corner of the camera is a recipe for disaster, especially when you're talking about such a gigantic um, and costly piece of, uh, of glass. And so Leica fashioned um, a tripod socket on the bottom of this sucker. Um, and you know, here I'm gonna, I discovered something. We could have an entire We're learn, episode it's, on glass. It's a, oh, you said glass, right? Glass. Yeah, Ooh. I agree, and we will. Um, I, this, is a, this is what they call a teachable moment. So I have an M6, you let, now, now he's listening. We have an M6 on which I put the 75 Noctilux, and the, you know, the lens, uh, all these cameras have a little place to release the lens. That little fixture right there, you press it in and the lens twists off. You know what I just discovered? I can't reach it. Oh, I got it. It's really hard to do because there's a little collar. So um, be aware when you get your 75 Noctilux that when you put it on one of the cameras that has a shrouded um, uh, release button that you might not be able to get it off so easily. There you go. You learn something new every day. Some people complain. They're like, Oh, this screen stinks. Well, Some yeah. people complain. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people complain. They're like, look at the comments. Yeah. People are complaining left and right. Take a look, and it's not just about me. People say, you know, they look at the they look at the screen and they're like, this screen. What are they? What? Well, Leica made this decision. The screen is for the menu. It's not for chimping. No chimping, please. It's my guilty pleasure. I must say, I chimp like a maniac. But and I, I hate myself for it. But I'm gonna. I'm, going to be truthful. I'm going to admit it to you and to the world. We have a question. What is chimping? To the novices of photography what chimping is. Chimping is when you take a picture and you check on it like that. Don't do that. Be in the moment. Just take the picture. I'm, I, well, look you, at you me telling you, you what to You couldn't chimp. Do. You couldn't chimp here. You can't chimp with that. Hell no. You this can't is an anti. This actually has an anti-chimping device right in the back. That's right. So does this one. It has an anti-chimping device. ACD. It's, yeah, ACD. So... I mean, look at me telling you what to do. Do whatever you want. I don't care. I, I, as if you're happy and healthy and enjoying your cameras and photography, then who am I to judge? I really don't care. I turn my screen off because I don't want the light to bother my eye if I shoot a, a successive shot. And also, I find myself getting distracted. Well, are you left eye dominant? I'm also left eye dominant. That makes so, a big difference. So, I'm glad you noticed that. So, there's... Do you think good photographers can be left eye dominant? Yeah. Okay. I do, not and not because I'm left eye dominant. Because I'm not really, I'm not a good photographer. I take some nice pictures every now and then. Well, let me ask you this: Do you think le left eye dominant photographers with big noses can be good photographers? Because doesn't I mean, honestly, <laughs> doesn't it get in the way? That's like, a reason not to have a touch screen. That's reason number one. Well, let me tell you, I have smeared more screens, and so when somebody hands me their camera, I'm like, wow, that's a nice camera. I don't put it up to my nose to my nose because I'm gonna smush my nose on the back of their camera. I'm like, oh, that's kinda of cool. But no, I am, that, Keith brings up a good point, and maybe we'll, we'll address this in, in much greater detail in another episode, but let me just give you an overview right now. About Especially when we run out of shit to talk about. It'll be like, because we're gonna episode 39, big nose, left eye dominant photographers, <laughs> right. and, the, and, the, and the screens they clean. And the screens they clean. Yeah, so you, you'll, you can follow us and watch the degradation of topics as we no we're gonna get and if you are a left eye dominant photographer with a large nose write in and let us know yeah we want to hear from you we want to hear from you because not you know not everybody's left right eye dominant it's actually i know i take it too seriously <laughs> really really know, this whole really thing is, let's let's go to tell me something i don't know about barnack Ooh, i like that a lot Okay, what can I tell you about Barnack? What do I know? I don't know much. He about had him. asthma. He wore glasses. Five foot eight. I don't. I made that up. I, I really don't know. I'm just going with it though. We were at we we visited his grave when we were in Vetslar, Keith and I, and we, we had did. like it felt really weird because he has this like this huge, like uh, uh, it's like a big stone looks almost like two, top two thirds of an egg, and um, uh, it just says Oscar Barnack on it, and um, 
uh, you know, the founder of the Leica camera. It says a couple other things on it, but it's really not, uh, it's not very fancy. And it's just like a lot of greenery behind it. And we all took like pictures at Oscar Barnack's grave, which at, in the moment it felt kind of neat to be connected with him in that way. But also now that I look at those photographs, it's like, it's kind of spooky. It's a little spooky. Well, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like weird. Hung our camera around. Yeah, we kind of like hung our camera around, around, put our arm around Oscar Barnack. So we all have a thing. Did you, tell, you? did you tell him about this? What? The Barnack hour. Who, Barnack? Yeah, did you, when you were I there, didn't did have you, the idea back then. Did you then? whisper it? Oh, no, you didn't have the idea. I whispered other sweet nothings in his ear. Maybe being there inspired the hour. It did. So, in, it, so the, the, the Leica was, <laughs> the Leica was invented in 1914. And in 2014, I made a pilgrimage to Leica Wetzlar and they had opened up a new factory there. And so I went with my Leica around my neck and I went on a little tour and I went up to the the lovely people at the reception there. And I said, hi, I'm from Chicago in the United States and I'm on a Leica pilgrimage for the 100 year uh, anniversary of the discovery and invention of Oscar Barnack's Kleina film camera. And they were like, uh-huh. Yeah, you and the last sure. 40 people this yeah, morning. Yeah, right. me and the last 100, yeah, 40 people who they saw in the last hour, everybody. I mean, it's, oh, so you know, one of the things we were gonna talk about, cause Keith and I were sitting here and we're like, what the are we gonna talk about? If you didn't guess. <laughs> Well, one of the things that we did was we grabbed monographs, like some of our favorite books. This is Arthur Meyerson, who's a Texas-based photographer who does Leica academies and, and classes as well and has this wonderful book. Um, the late Michael Abramson's Gotta Go, Gotta Flow, black and white photographs from uh, nightclubs in Southside Chicago. Uh, and these uh, were all made with a Leica and a flash. Uh, and these were, oh man, just, just fantastic photographs. And we'll put some links uh, in. Uh, uh, down below, uh, and you can see some of these wonderful photographs. And I want to do, we're going to return to this topic and we're going to talk more about these monographs. But you asked, who is Craig Semetko? Who is Craig Semetko? Craig Semetko is a um, United States photographer who is based in Chicago and out west in LA as well. Travels the world, made his first book called Unposed, which I believe now is out of print. It's a terrific book with a foreword by Elliot Erwitt, which is very apropos gentlemen to do a forward for this Tanui edition. It's a really terrific edition. Um, and Semeco has a wonderful sense of humor and a terrific style. Probably better than ours. De definitely better than ours. He's a very funny man and handsome too. Anyway, uh, Semeco, that's who Craig, so that's Craig, Craig, who Craig Semeco is. He's a wonderful photographer and a good friend of ours. And he also, his, his follow-up is called India Unposed. These are all black and white images. India Unpo Unposed, um, these were all made with Leica. And they're terrific photographs. Uh, and so thank you for asking. That's who Craig Semeco is. He's a friend of ours. This is one of the things we were gonna talk about today, but we're gonna get to later because we really wanted this just to be an introduction to who we are and how we roll. But one of the things that we were gonna talk about for this inaugural Barnack Hour, it, it was street photography. But holy shit, that's a huge topic you Wait, know, to sorry, bite yeah. into. So we're, we're gonna leave that for later, but the reason I mention it is because really a lot of this stuff, the reason that it's called Unposed is because it's street photography. It's, you know, phot photography that's happening probably in public, probably without the people who are being photographed knowing, and um, with an idea to capture a moment and its context. Um, I wanna say right now that, um, I'm gonna say it once and I'm never gonna say it again. The decisive moment. Now I'm done saying that. I'm tired of that phrase. Every moment's decisive. And if you take lots of pictures, Ooh. you'll get a decisive moment. I just feel like. Did I drop, I dropped something there, didn't I? Nothing more should be said. Is that it? Did we close right Was there? Was that the decisive moment? That could have been the decisive moment. What if moment. that's the only moment? What if that's the funniest moment that we ever have? Oh, that, then that would indeed be decisive. I know I'm not supposed to move my chair on the floor, but I gotta do something here because I got a decisive moment for you. Where's my beer opener? Thank you, honey. Here's a decisive moment. You can turn it off Bud Light Cap. There's probably some. I, I don't twist off Bud Light Caps. Any beer you can twist off the cap isn't worth drinking. Is the FEC or the SEC or anyone else gonna bother by, by this, you know? I don't know. Uh, we're gonna find out. Yeah, have a good one. There's a sponsorship plug right there just by drinking. <sighs> Let's go in, Oh, you got, we got to turn the labels backwards, right? Oh, sorry. I don't know. Are we we gonna, can blur them out in We're going to get sued? Blur them out in post. We're going to find out. 
we're going to find out. So now, as you could probably tell, I'm being signaled that our, our, our time is up. Uh, that means our, our time Barnack is up. The Barnack hour has ended. The Barnack hour has ended. Do you have some awesome outro music? That's what, <laughs> that's perfect. That's what we want our theme to be. But, it's probably some reason you can't do that, too. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get sued for something, I'm sure. <laughs> Just a matter of time. We'll find out. Uh, so you'll have to enjoy this music uh, uh, instead for our outro. And so I want to thank you for joining Keith and I in our inaugural episode of the Barnack Hour. And I hope that you'll click on some of the links down below and leave us a comment and tell us a thing, whether it's good or bad or indifferent or not relevant at all. We hope that you'll engage and we look forward to seeing you again. So uh, don't try any of this at home. We're trained professionals. Thanks for watching, y'all. Cheers, buddy.